Hello and welcome. I'm Joseph Hoffman, and today we're going to work on learning Section C of Beethoven's Fur Elise. Just to be clear, we are learning Beethoven's full original version of Fur Elise, which as far as difficulty goes is a level 6, which is for intermediate pianists. Also, if you haven't learned the A or B sections yet, you might want to check out those tutorials first. Okay, let's get started with learning the section C of Beethoven's Fur Elise. So let's check out the first chord in the right hand of the C section. You'll see this complex looking four note chord. But let's just break it down one note at a time. Starting with the bottom note, you see we've got an E and then a G. And then another skip up, you can see we've got a B, but that flat is in line with that B. And then we've got a C in line with this sharp, so a C sharp. So E, G, B flat, C sharp, played with fingers one, two, three, five. Once you try that chord out on your piano. Isn't that a juicy, sweet chord? That's called a fully diminished seven chord. It's a diminished chord with another minor third on top, and it creates this really intense sound. Beethoven likes to use fully diminished seven chords to create some angst, some feeling of emotion there. Okay, so we've got that chord which lasts for three beats. One, two, three. That resolves to a D minor first inversion chord. F, A, finger two, and finger five on D. Go ahead and try that out. Good, now let's practice going between those. We've got the fully diminished chord. One, two, three, five, going to the D minor first inversion chord. Good. Now press pause and just work on going between those two chords uh, several tries, then press play to go on. Good. Now after that D minor chord, we hold that for two beats. One, two, and then three and. Come up here with fingers two and four on C sharp and E. Two sixteenth notes, three and. Now you try. One more time, three and. Now you try. Good, then after that, we add in this G sharp. So you've got to kind of shift your hand forward so your thumb can reach. What I don't want to see is you awkwardly twisting your hand to the side like that. To reach with the thumb, you glide forward on the keys like this. And then G sharp, D, F with fingers one, three, five. Try that chord. One, two, three. And that record resolves to an A minor chord, which I suggest doing with fingers one, two, four. And here's why. Since you've got three and five on that chord, it's a very nice way to resolve the chord using one, two, and four. One, two, three, one, two, three. Now press pause and work on this section. One, two, three, one, two, three. Actually, go all the way back to da, one, two, three, one, two, three. Press pause to work on that little section, then press play to go on. Now let's put those four measures together. So we've got this fully diminished chord, one, two, three, to D minor, one, two, three, and one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, now it's your turn to press pause. I'd like you to count out loud while you play this. Otherwise, it's easy to lose track of the beat, and the rhythm in this section is so important. So, counting while you play, work on those four measures on your own, then press play to go on. Good. Now next up, we've got this section with the interval of a sixth being kind of the driving factor here. We've got this F and then up a sixth to D. Two beats, one, two, three, and one, two. Now when you're moving down in six, make sure you keep your wrist relaxed. In fact, take your left hand and just kind of hold your forearm and just kind of flop your wrist for a little bit like that. Okay, that's kind of how you want to feel. When you're moving down these six, think of a really flexible wrist there, kind of like you're dribbling a basketball. One, two, three, and one, two. 
Now, if your hand is big enough to comfortably play this last chord with one, two, four, that's what I recommend on that C, F sharp, A, which is an F sharp diminished chord in second inversion, if you care, right? And you should care, right? So we're coming down in six, one, two, three, and one, two. Now, press pause and work on that section. So you might want to really slow it down. One, two, three, and one, two. Okay, and be sure you land on that chord properly. Press pause and give that section uh, some work and then press play to go on. Now, so we've ended up on this F sharp diminished second inversion chord. And then on beat three, we play just the C and the A in that open sixth. We repeat, and I'm, I'm continuing to use my finger one and four because those were the fingers that ended up there. So one, four, one, four. Then we jump up a third. So I switch to one, five, and then we have these descending sixths. So you could just use one, five, one, five, one, five for your fingering as those sixths come down. But a more advanced fingering would create a more legato tone like this. You do one, five, one, four, one, three. And to make it really legato, what you do is you lift your thumb to move down, but you keep your finger five holding until the last possible moment. You lift your thumb, hold that finger down, and you see that way you can create a purely legato tone. Listen. See, even when I lift my thumb, I don't lift that top finger until I play the next note. That's a really advanced fingering technique to make a very legato sound. 5-1, 4-1, and then 3-1. Now, if that's too big of a stretch for your hands, you can do 5-1, 5-1, and then 4-1. Or if even that's too much of a stretch, 5-1, 5-1, 5-1 is okay as well. So, try those out. Start with this one and just see how that fits in your hand with the 5-4-3 on top. Press pause and try out that section from here, skipping up. Find a way to make that as legato as possible. Press pause to work on that, then press play to go on. Now let's put those four measures together. So coming back up here, one, two, three, and one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Try putting that all together and remember to work on a really legato sound with these parallel sixths. Okay, when we're moving in six in similar motion like that, we can call it parallel sixths. Press pause and work on that section, then press play to go on. Okay, next up we get back to this fully diminished C sharp, fully diminished seven chord. It's in first inversion. That E, G, B flat, C sharp. Let's try that. One, two, three. That resolves again to the D minor first inversion. One, two, three, and this should look familiar. One, two, but now things change a little bit. Instead of the chord with the G sharp on the bottom, it's just the D and F on top with fingers three and five would work. One, two, three, one, two, three. Okay. See how that changes just a little bit from before. And now we kind of modulate here to temporarily, it kind of feels like we're in the key of B flat. So you've got to watch out for E flat and B flat. And we're in sixth again. So finger one is on G, finger five is on E flat. And we come down these sixths and land on this B flat major first inversion chord. I recommend fingers one, two, four, like this. So watch that again. We have one, two, three, and one, two. Now this is a really tricky and awkward place because you've got black keys on your thumb, which again, you might be tempted to twist your hand. Instead of twisting that much, just glide forward. See how much more natural that looks than like this. Okay, so just shift your hand forward to accommodate the black keys. Once again, one, two, three, and one, two. Press pause to work on that section. Watch out for those black keys and work on navigating them. 
and then press play to go on. Okay, after we have one, two, three, and one, two, three, notice the bottom two notes stay the same in the chord. The top note steps down to A, use fingers one, two, four, and then the bottom two notes stay the same. The top note moves to G sharp, one, two. Okay, so we've got this D, F, G sharp with fingers one, two, three, one, two, three, one. Now it's marked staccato, but I don't like to make it too quick. Okay, we're going to kind of give it a, a gentle touch there. All right. Now, let's put this whole section together back to here. One, two, three, and one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And make sure you observe those eighth rests. One, two, on beat two, make sure there's silence. One, two, three. And then float your wrist up right there. Okay, press pause and work on those five measures on your own, then press play to go on. Now, let's take a look at the dynamics, because these are so important in this section to create a feeling of drama. We start piano at the beginning of this section, then you see that crescendo mark. Now, to do a good crescendo, you have to start soft. Sometimes a student sees crescendo and they immediately want to get louder. Remember, crescendo means start to get louder, and to be successful with that, you want to begin at a soft level. So when you see crescendo, think soft, and then gradually build, build, then, where you see that forte, that's your climax, okay? So by the time you get to that forte, you want to get to a climax. And it resolves a little bit there, but it's gonna stay pretty loud. Now we see a diminuendo. And again, sometimes student thinks, oh, diminuendo, get quiet. No, it means begin gradually getting quiet. And to do that, you have to start loud. So we're gonna be loud here, still pretty loud, and gradually softer, softer down to piano. Okay, so stay pretty loud through here, and then gradually die away. Now we're going to start crescendoing again. One, two, three, four, forte. Now diminuendo is going to start to fade away. One, two, three, one, two, Three. Okay? Press pause and try this entire section now with right hand alone several times and try to pay attention to the dynamics and how you're growing and diminuendoing throughout. And then press play to go on. Next comes the really fun part. You see all these triplets which means now in the space where we used to have two beats, one and two and three, and now we have to fit three sounds in one beat. Da 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 da. And you'll notice it's an A minor arpeggio. If you analyze the notes, you'll see A C E A C E. So it's almost a two octave arpeggio. The fingering will be one, two, three, one, three, five. The reason we switch to one, three, five there is we don't need to hit that top A. So we'll do a slightly modified arpeggio fingering. One, two, three, one, three, five. And then you'll notice it steps down there, just steps down the penta scale. So one, two, three, one, three, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, let's just try that much. One, two, three, one, three, five. Now you try. Good. And to slow it down, it'd be one, two, three, one, three, five. Now you try again. Good. And then when we get there, it just repeats the pattern again. Then it repeats the pattern again. Until you get to here, you've got to use a finger one because then the next note starts a chromatic scale going down. 
leading us back to the A section for one last time. Okay, so watch that again. We have one, two, three. Chromatic scale. Now let me tell you the one place to really watch out for it. When you get up to here on the third repeat of the pattern, here's number one, number two, number three. Now here's where it changes. You're going to want to use a finger two there on that B, but that will trip you up for the blackie. You've got to use a finger one there on the B, very important, so your finger three can come across to start the chromatic scale. Does that make sense? So it's not the fing same fingering as the other patterns. The others come down five, four, three, two, one. But on this last one, you're going to use a finger one on the B, and then the chromatic scale fingering is finger three on all the black keys, finger one on all the white keys. Until you get to two whites in a row, then you do two, one, three, one, three, two, one. Two is for the two whites in a row, then three, one, three, one, three, two, one, and then it goes back into the A theme. Okay, so watch that whole section. So we have one, two, three, finger one, into the chromatic scale. Into the A section, okay? Very important that you're careful with those fingerings. A correct fingering is going to make it so you can do this nice and quick and artistically. Okay, notice it's not loud. It's not. It's marked pianissimo. The little crescendo, then dying away. Back to the A theme. Okay, press pause and work on this section on your own, then press play to go on. Now that you have the right hand part down, the left hand is going to feel easy. But I do want to show you an advanced fingering technique that you may have learned or maybe not. When you have repeating notes, a lot of them in a row, it's a more professional and advanced fingering technique to not just use the same finger the whole time, like this. The reason for that is because using the same finger over and over again for a lot of repeats in a row can create tension in the hand and lead to kind of an ugly sound too. So a more appropriate technique for all these repeated notes would be to use a pattern like 3 2 one 3 2 one 3 2 one 3 2 one And you'll notice if I kind of turn my hand a little bit, I can make it so fingers 3, 2, and 1 can all comfortably access that one note. So I barely have to move, and you can see I can just rotate through those three fingers very comfortably. 3, 2, 1, 3, 2, 1, 3, 2, 1, 3, 2, 1. What I'd like you to do is go ahead and press the damper pedal down to create a nice smooth sound, and very gently at a piano or pianissimo level. Just practice. Three, two, one, three, two, one. Three, two, one, three, two, one. Start slow and then speed it up a little bit to about this speed. Da, 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 da. Using that fingering is going to be very good for creating a nice subtle sound. So press pause and work on that until you feel comfortable with it, then press play to go on. Then when you get to the chords, you're going to have to shift to just a finger one and five. And again, just keep your wrist relaxed and flexible so it doesn't create a tense, jagged sound. You want a nice, subtle sound. Okay, and notice where the chord changes. We've got D and A to D sharp and A, then up to E and A, then E and G sharp, and then this octave. And for the fingering there, I recommend one five, then 
one, one, then three, two, one. One, one, three, two, one. And then you can go back to the three, two, one pattern. Then notice where it shifts up to a B flat. And then that continues for three measures. Then it shifts up to a B natural. Sorry, three, two, one, three, two, one. And then we're to this section. Okay. So now press pause and work on the left hand alone a couple of times. If you want, you can even try some of this hands together if you feel ready for that challenge. But I maybe recommend at first just sticking with hands alone and then press play to go on. Now, when we arrive to this B natural, we've got three, two, one, three, two, one, and then E and G sharp. Then we've got this low A with these little A minor chords. I play them very light and gentle. And then we're back to the A section. Okay, now we've been through all of the right hand, all of the left hand. Let's hear how all of those combine for the C section. And again, I want you to notice how this section to me kind of sounds like a storm maybe a storm at sea and a storm at sea the waves are going to raise and then they're going to plunge back down and just like that you're going to hear the dynamics build in intensity and then there it has to come back down do not play this all loud or it's going to lose that excitement of the build remember to don't start your crescendos at a loud a crescendo has to start soft and gradually build it here we go. And then you're back to the A section. As you're practicing, remember, don't just go for the right notes. Go for the right style and the right feeling, too, to really make the music exciting. Excitement requires softs and louds and knowing how to play between the two. Great job learning Section C of Fury Lease. Once you have all the sections mastered, work hard on making your entire performance artistic, beautiful, and stylish. Then, last of all, be sure to share your music with a friend or family member. Or you can even share a video performance with me online. Thanks so much for watching and learning with me, and happy practicing! Yeah.